Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Do you have more than one computer that you'd like to connect to a single keyboard, mouse, and monitor? You have come to the right place. This is a KVM switch. No, don't all run off. This is more interesting than you think. This is gonna be a quick video of me explaining how I actually use these in the office and what some of the pros and cons are. Now, I bought this with my own money. It's not a product sample. This video is not sponsored by this company in any way, but I do own several of these and I use them throughout my office. In this video, I'm not gonna be showing you a bunch of pretty B-roll going, here's how you plug an HDMI cable into a computer, because you all know how to plug an HDMI cable into a computer. Instead, what I'm gonna to talk to you about is where this works, where it doesn't, and some things to think about before you consider buying a KVM switch. Today's video is brought to you by Ewin Racing, the best source for gaming chairs and desks for those long gaming sessions. We have a playlist of our Ewin chair and desk videos linked in the video description below. Save 30% off of everything using the discount code TECHDEALS. More details at the end of the video. This is not an unboxing video. See, it's already out of the box. It's a KVM switch. In fact, it says USB multi-computer switch four port made in China. And that is all the identifying marks that are on here. Isn't everything made in China these days? This is actually a very simple device that either works really well or it works really poorly depending upon which one you get and what you're expecting out of it. Now, one thing that I'm very pleasantly surprised by these is the fact that it does not actually disconnect the USB and video signal from your various computers when you switch between them. And what that means is that your USB ports in your video screen aren't being constantly detected, not detected, detected, not detected, so that as you switch between them, your resolution and display are just there, your keyboard and mouse work instantly, and you're not constantly getting notifications in Windows. So it does continue to send a signal to all of the various outputs, which is very nice. This also supports three different USB devices being plugged into it that it then sends to each of the computers. So you plug your keyboard and your mouse and one other device, if you like, to this box and then it sends those along the HDMI cable via breakout thing I'll show you here in a second to the actual computers themselves. The astute among you will notice there are four buttons on here because this is a four-way KVM switch. Now at the time of filming, this was $35. Prices change, but that tends to be the going rate for an HDMI 1.4, more on that in a minute, KVM switch that controls four devices. There is, however, a remote control, which is really nice. You can put this big clunky thing with tons of cables plugged into it behind your monitor, behind your desk, somewhere out of reach. And instead of having to reach up and actually hit these buttons, instead you have a remote control with four buttons and it provides an included cable, which is actually quite long, which connects the remote control to the switch. So you can just put this on your desk and put this out of the way. For all of you worried that the cable's not long enough, that's pretty decently long, and it's a standard USB cable, so if you want a longer one, you can get one. The HDMI cables necessary to connect the switch to the computers are included. The HDMI cable to connect the switch to your monitor is not, but you should already have an HDMI cable because you're using your monitor now. So use that and plug it into the switch, and then use these to plug into your computer. Note, it is not DisplayPort, and while technically DisplayPort to HDMI adapters work, I don't necessarily recommend them. Untangles, this is how long the HDMI cables included are. It's not bad. However, if you're gonna have four computers plugged into a single keyboard, mouse, and monitor, it's a little bit on the short side. Thankfully, HDMI extension cables do work. On one end of the HDMI cable included in the package is a standard HDMI cable and you plug it right into the switch itself. There are four HDMI ports on this side of the switch and those go to the computers. On this side of the switch, there is one HDMI port, that's what goes to your monitor, and then of course it switches between them. On the other end of the cable, 
You have a standard HDMI plug and a breakout USB plug, which the data is then sent along the wire. This you plug into your video card like you normally would. This you plug into any available USB port on the computer. 2.0, 3.0 does not matter. It's, it's a 2.0 connector. It's just primarily providing low speed data and power. This is how the KVM switch gets power. And it's also sending the keyboard, mouse, and whatever you plug into the third connector along to the computer. Each one of the cables has these. So basically the computer is always getting a keyboard and mouse signal regardless of which you're actually connected to at the time. It is worth noting this becomes a cable mess once you actually have everything plugged into it. And I haven't even plugged in the keyboard and mouse or the other HDMI cable. Now there's no extra power required. This gets everything it needs to run off of the USB connectors, which is nice to not have another power brick. This is also why it's nice to have the remote control so that you don't have to have this sitting out on your desk. I mentioned before there are three USB ports. Technically there are four. The small micro USB port is for connecting to the remote control. There is one USB type A 2.0 port on this side and there are two USB type A 2.0 ports on this side of the switch. Now you might be saying keyboard, mouse, video. Why do you need three USB ports? Actually, I have found those to be very useful. I have some wireless mice and those wireless mice have a little USB radio receiver. Yet you also have to plug these mice in. Now some use just regular AA batteries, but I have some wireless mice that actually have a USB cable that plugs into the mouse and uses USB power to recharge and onboard nickel metal hydride battery on the mouse. What this lets me do is it lets me plug the keyboard and mouse recharging cable into two of these ports and the wireless receiver into the third. So I can plug my mouse in and use it as a wired mouse plugged in while charging or unplug it and use it as a wireless mouse and it automatically switches to the radio receiver. That's actually kind of nice. Now, if you have a webcam or a USB microphone or some other USB device you want to plug in, you can certainly do so. And in theory, you could use a USB hub to give you even more ports if you wanted to, although I don't know that I would go completely crazy with that, but it's nice that there are three instead of two ports on this. Well, that's a nice feature overview and an explanation of the ports and what it does and how it connects. How does it work? What are the pros? What are the cons? As I said, I own multiple of these. I use them on a variety of machines. It's excellent, but not perfect. First of all, for most uses, it's very responsive. It takes about one second when you press the button on either the remote or the main device to switch over to the other computer. And because the monitor doesn't have to cycle through inputs and the computer still maintains a signal, your monitor, obviously this is gonna depend upon your monitor, but in my experience, the monitors do not cycle in and cycle out because they're always receiving a signal from this box. And so they, they just sort of stay there. It's very responsive. However, this is an HDMI 1.4 rated device, which means 4K 30 Hertz, not 60 Hertz. It also means if you have a high refresh rate monitor connected through DisplayPort, this may not work for you. This ideally was designed for 1080p 60 Hertz. It will work higher than that. It will do 1440p. Well, actually, you know, it's funny you say that. Yeah, I know I heard you through the screen. This will do more than it's rated for. Now, fear not. If you have a 4K monitor or if you have a high refresh rate 1440p monitor, there are HDMI 2.0 KVM switches. I will link to those along with this down in the video description below. They cost more, just be aware. For the same price, roughly for about $35, on an HDMI 2.0 switch, you get a two computer KVM switch instead of a four computer. You're gonna spend in the $60 price range to get a four computer HDMI 2.0 switch. If you have a high refresh rate monitor or if you have a, a 4K monitor, just get the KVM 2.0 or the HDMI 2.0 switch. It makes more sense. Having said that, we have a 55 inch Samsung 4K television here at the office. I have more than one computer plugged into it. HDMI 2.0. 4K 60 Hertz. This works, believe it or not. It shouldn't. It's not rated for it. It's not designed for it, but it works. On the other hand, I have another machine that has a 1440p 144 Hertz monitor and it doesn't work. It's very persnickety on that. 
1440p 60 hertz works beautifully, but the high refresh rate for whatever reason really gives this thing fits if you do have such a monitor. Now, this just for some reason works on our 4K television at 60 hertz. It shouldn't. The specs aren't rated for it, but it does. Spend the extra 30 bucks if you've got such a nice TV. It just, I tried it because I didn't really care because I don't use those machines very much. Go ahead and get the 60, uh, 60 hertz HDMI 2.0 version. In terms of applications and use, now my hope is that if you're in a KVM video, you know why you need one of these. You're not sitting here going, why would I want one of those? What, what possible use could I use for that sort of thing? Well, if you don't know, you probably don't need one if I'm being completely honest. However, if you have an extra computer that maybe you're running virtual machines or using as a file server, perhaps you're doing scientific rendering or you're uh, running MATLAB or you're doing Blender renders that take hours and you don't need to see the screen very often, you've offloaded work to it from your primary machine, you just occasionally need to see the screen. Instead of setting up a separate keyboard monitor and mouse, you can use this to control it. Maybe you have several computers you tinker with. Maybe you are a hobbyist and you've got a desk where you've got your main computer, a secondary computer you use regularly, or maybe even you keep open as a test bench. And then occasionally you fix other computers for people and you're setting them down and you're messing with them and doing stuff, but you don't have a lot of space, but you want to be able to plug in an extra computer. Just because you get a four uh, port KVM switch doesn't mean you have to permanently connect three or four devices to it. Maybe you have two permanently connected and then occasionally you want to plug in the others. Maybe you want to go grab your Xbox or PlayStation and set it down and just plug that in temporarily and use your keyboard, monitor, and mouse. You can do that. Maybe you want to uh, hook up a spare machine or an extra computer from a friend that you need to fix and you just occasionally need to plug things in so you leave a cable there unplugged but you can plug in and use anytime you want. Another interesting application for one of these would be on a television for retro game consoles. Maybe you're the kind of person who has a Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, original Nintendo, TurboGrafx-16, 3DO, and Atari Jaguar, anyone? Maybe you've got a variety of uh, consoles. Maybe you've got a Xbox 360 and a PlayStation 2 that you want to plug in. Your TV may not have enough HDMI ports. Solution. Now again, modern TVs and modern devices. If you have an Xbox Series X and a PlayStation 5, you need the HDMI 2.0 version of this, not the HDMI 1.4 as I have right here. But it is another application in use. And the fact is, for $35, this works remarkably well. Where it doesn't work great is on high refresh rate monitors, which I've had trouble with, although it does work on ultra wides. I did manage to use this on a 3440 by 1440p 60 hertz ultra wide, but not a 100 hertz ultra wide. That really needs display port. And it's, they've been very reliable. As I said, I've got them on several different machines and I have no complaints. For $35, if you have a use for this, you're looking at less than $10 per port per computer to plug something in. The fact that it comes with the HDMI cables, the fact that it comes with a remote control, I give this nine out of 10 stars. And the only reason I don't give it 10 stars is the fact that where it's going to work and where it's not gonna work beyond 1080p, beyond 60 hertz is an open question. I wish it was a little bit more consistent and I wish it gave you some feedback if it's not displaying a signal as to why it's not displaying a signal. That's kind of frustrating, but that's a very minor quibble. As I said, if you have such a monitor, if you have such a TV, spend the extra $30, buy the HDMI 2.0 version of this and make that problem go away. Ewin Racing has a wide selection of chairs to fit all shapes and sizes of gamers, ranging from petite to cuddly, they have something for every type of gamer. Not just sizes, but colors and material options as well, including red, blue, purple, pink, orange, and more, plus cloth and leather choices. We have over half a dozen chair and desk videos in a playlist down in the video description below. We also have a very special offer just for Tech Deals viewers. 
Save 30% off of everything using discount code TECHDEALS using our link in the video description. We have used eWin gaming chairs for three years in our office, sitting on them for up to eight hour marathon live streams. They are very comfortable and we are happy to work with eWin to bring you this special discount and recommend eWin for all of your gaming chair and desk needs. Was this helpful, useful, and informative to you? Awesome! Give this video a like. Make sure you're subscribed, ring that bell notification icon to actually be notified when the videos come out. As I mentioned before, I will link to this and the HDMI 2.0 version down in the video description below to Amazon. That's an affiliate link. If you like this and you use that link, anything you buy with it supports the channel at no extra cost to you and is greatly appreciated. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. Do any of you use one of these? Do you use a different brand or a different looking one? Do you use a two port or four port? Are you happy with it? What applications or what circumstances caused you to get one? I'm curious as to how people use these. And if you watched this video and you decided to buy one, share with me where you're going to be using it. On a TV for game consoles, on a computer, are you doing uh, VMs and or is it a file server or something else? I would love to hear what you guys are all planning on doing with one of these, if you do plan to get one. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see all of you next time.